do this tonight, the entire locker room is out to pay tribute to these two gentlemen that have been rocking the state of Delaware for the past 10 years. And we'd like to thank them here tonight by inducting them into the second annual 2014 DCW Hall of Fame. Introducing at first, the inductor for the first inductee in the 2014 Hall of Fame and returning to Dynamite Championship Wrestling for the first time in a year, Zach the As they announced already, I would like to formally introduce everybody to the 2014 Second Annual DCW Hall of Fame right here in Farmington. Also, you can clap, that's fine. Also, later tonight is the 11th Annual Honor Cup in Dynamite Championship Wrestling. Something that I was lucky enough to go through three grueling rounds and defeat JJ Cruz to win just a few years ago. So, the person I'm inducting tonight, I've actually never, ever stepped into the ring with one-on-one. -on -one. I've known him since 2007. I watched his first day in the DCW Pro Wrestling School. And when I looked at him, I said, man, that guy has a body. He's got the body of a pro wrestler. He's got the body of a guy that can go to the top. And then I watched him move in the ring, and I said, this guy's not going anywhere. I looked at, it's, that's funny, you guys come back. I looked at him and I said, just simple things like running in the ring, or even just walking, everything was so awkward to him. Um, there was a time when this person uh, was in a shell. He didn't have the charisma that a professional wrestler and a sports entertainer like myself needs to succeed in this business. And he was only, unfortunately, able to train once a week, which it's very hard to become a professional wrestler when you're only training once a week. So everybody looked at him and said, ah, he's not gonna make it, he's got the look, but he's just not gonna make it. The other guy that he was training with at the time is a guy by the name of the Maple Leaf Machine, K.O. Storm. Not sure if you've heard of him. K.O. Storm was training three days a week. He was doing stuff off the top one of his first nights in. And I looked at my buddy, Chris Wilde, and I said, this KO Storm guy is gonna go far. And Chris Wilde said to me, yeah, but I still see something. I still see something in this other cat. And the other cat is a guy by the name of Brandon the Body Rodriguez. And Brandon, everybody said, even myself at the very beginning, he might not do it. He might not make it, but he did. So a few years goes by, and we were down the road in Bowers Beach, Delaware, at the Bowers Beach Fire Hall, and Brandon made his debut in DCW by the name of Brandino Cuervo. He was a fun-loving, Spanish, body, amazing wrestler by that time period. But he still had a little bit of a shell. There was still a little bit of him that couldn't break through to what we needed in DCW as a company and what he needed to become a successful professional wrestler. So there was one night where he fought a guy by the name of the Honorable RGP. And following that match, someone brought Brandino Cuervo a bottle of tequila into the ring. Brandino proceeds to start drinking the bottle of tequila as if it's a bottle of water like this. 
and proceeds to get drunk in a matter of two minutes. Brandino Cuervo then exudes the amount of charisma and everything else because of the tequila, and I saw in him what I knew was a superstar. He came backstage and I said, that's what we need to do. We need to get you drunk before every match. Obviously, we didn't do that, but he knew at that point it clicked. It clicked in his head what he needed to do to please you people, to put on a great show. Later that year, Brandon would actually turn his back on the people to join the Gemini Trojans in what would become the Gemini program. He was going to become the first ever Trojan in training. Tid. It didn't really work. So Brandon, not liking that, decided, I'm going to look to a guy who's a Grand Slam winner in DCW. I'm going to look to a guy by the name of Mark the Dragonfly Horror who helped train me, and I'm going to look at that guy, and I'm going to follow him. I'm going to tag with him. I'm going to do everything he does, and I'm going to succeed and walk in his footsteps because he's a guy that has done a lot in this business, and he's a former Hall of Famer with DCW. So Brandon dubbed himself the Latin Weapon and started teaming with Mark Haro. Unfortunately, after a few months, that tag team dissipated and Brandon was left without anything. He wasn't getting the reactions that he wanted from you guys, and he wasn't putting on the matches that he knew and we knew as DCW that he was capable of. So from there, Brandon said, I don't, I don't know what to do. So my best friend, a guy by the name of Chris Wild, said, let me take him under my wing. Let me take Brandon and put him in a group known as the American Male Regime. And in that group, Chris Wilde forced Brandon to once again come out of that shell. Brandon would come out here and cut promos like I am right now, wearing a suit jacket like I am right now, and nothing but this and little tidy trunks. We were forcing him to come out of that shell to put on the best performance he could for all of and did. Brandon went on to win the No Limit Championship that Money Waters holds over his shoulder right now. Brandon went on to win the Hardcore Championship and then dubbing himself the Technical Wrestling Champion because he felt hardcore had no place in wrestling. Something I agree with. Brandon then went on to fight in many main events in Harley, Delaware. Clawing and prying and getting to the top of DCW but still not getting, getting that title. So finally one night he fought Andrew Steele and he hit the body shot in the middle of the ring and pinned him one, two, three to win the DCW International Heavyweight Championship. And within 30 seconds of him winning, a guy by the name of K.O. Storm came out and cashed in his championship opportunity and defeated Brandon for the very title that Brandon clawed and worked so hard for for so long. So Brandon, in that moment, said, I know what I need to do. I don't need to look to Zach Connor. I don't need to look to Chris Wall. I don't need to look to Dry Fly. I need to look at myself. Brandon looked in himself and found what he needed to do to succeed in this business and succeed in this company, and he did Six months later, Brandon regained the DCW International Heavyweight Championship and was putting on the best matches on the card on those nights. Now, January 2010, I was scheduled to face Brandon the Body Rodriguez in a one-on-one -on -one match for his heavyweight championship. I suffered a neck injury and was not able to do so. I did not know at that point that I would never have the opportunity again to wrestle him because one month later, at the Guts and Glory anniversary show, Brandon told all of us backstage that that was his final night at DCW. His family, who's sitting here tonight, did not know at the time. In fact, one of the matches with K.O. Storm, Brandon's own father jumped the guardrail and attacked K.O. Storm, which was pretty badass. And it was on that night that Brandon the Body Rodriguez retired as heavyweight champion when he defeated K.O. Storm. It was one of the best matches I've seen in this company's history and since. And Brandon walked away and everybody said, oh, he'll be back, he'll be back, he'll be back. His own family said, oh, you can't go. You put so much time into this. You're finally the guy. You're finally the champion. And he said, no, I have other things in my life, personal things that I need to do and I want to do. And he did. And Brandon has never stepped foot back in this ring from February 2010 until tonight. After many years, I finally was able to convince him to accept an honor that he worked so hard for and deserves more than so many people. So what I'd like to do right now is to show a little video on my friend and on the guy that I'm inducting tonight, Brandon the Body Rodriguez.
So ladies and gentlemen, what I'd like to do right now is introduce to you for the first time in four and a half years to step inside of a DCW building, inside of a DCW ring, and in front of all of you people, Brandon the Body Rodriguez. Taking all these hard hits in here, you start to really feel it. 
and uh, I've had a few, you know, issues with my neck and everything I've been dealing with for the last few couple of years. Um, to break it down, I've got uh, two herniated discs, some compressed discs, and a pinch nerve on my left side. But it hasn't stopped me from hitting the gym. Um, you know, I you know I needed time away to heal, and uh, and um, and also uh, in 2012, I got married to the love of my life, sitting right there. Um, so yeah, you know, I've just been, uh, you know, staying to myself, and uh, you know, a lot of guys, I, you know, I haven't really contacted and talked to in years. You know, when I said I was done with wrestling, you know, I stuck to my word, and I went to do other things. And I'm sure the other question on everybody's mind is the possibility of me returning to wrestling. You know, I've been asked this several times, are you coming back? Um, my doctor's orders are for me to not have any high, you know, not participate in anything high impact. But at the same time, I'm still, I'm still in great physical condition. And uh, you know, like I said, I was actually tearing it up at the gym today. Um, deadlifted 405, so you know, like I said, uh, we'll see. You never know what the future's gonna hold. One day I might decide to step back in here, go after a DCW International Heavyweight Title. I mean, in wrestling, you never know what's gonna happen. But anyway, moving on. Um, I'd like to talk about some of the influences in my career. You know, influences, people, you know, important people in my career. First off, you know, on the list I'd like to start with Chris Wilde, who we actually slaved away in a warehouse together, and he's actually the one responsible for introducing me to DCW. Um, and also getting me involved in one of the coolest groups in DCW history, the American Male Regime. Um, and Chris Wild, you know, he, I really looked up to him. He helped give me direction in my, in my career. He helped give me charisma. You know, he just, he got me pointed in the right direction I needed to go to really start succeeding. And I'd also like to next talk about my head trainer, Mark the Dragonfly Horo, which Mark has an incredible eye for talent. And in me, you know, you know, I had the body, but going in the ring, you know, I suck. And uh, and Mark was that guy that he could manipulate my mind and body, you know, to do what was necessary to work well in this ring. So, you know, Mark's not here today, but uh, you know, if you're watching Mark, I just want to say thank you for training me. You were, you know. You are a huge help in getting me where I needed to go. Yeah. And I'm also going to remember, uh, and I'm also going to um, mention the Gemini Trojans. I don't know how many people remember the Gemini Trojans. They're the best to describe them. They are the craziest, hard-hitting twins I've ever seen. Um, and they helped me out a lot with the training. And I also want to thank Jack, Josh Trojan for smashing out my contact in the middle of a match. So, you know, I had to wrestle the rest of the match. You can barely see. So thank you for that, Josh. Um, now I'm gonna move on to Andrew Steele. Uh, Steele and me actually go way back. I actually knew Steele back in high school. And it's funny how years later, wrestling really brought us together because we weren't really friends in high school. And, you know, we really didn't know each other. But Steele was actually the first guy I debuted against in DCW. Um, I actually won my first No Limits title and heavyweight title from Steele. So, I would like to mention also another member of the American Male Regime, LGP. We teamed up with several times and won the tag team titles. 
We traveled on the road together, and he also introduced me to another promotion. I worked for quite a few years called Old Time Wrestling up in Belmont, Warren, New Jersey, um, which I'm going to lead to. Uh, I'm going to mention the promoter at Atlas. He is actually the one that came up with my name after all the gimmicks, Brandon and Cuervo, the Latin weapon. He just come up to me one day and he said, I'm going to call you to buy. And I was like, you know, okay, cool. Um, so I learned, I actually did learn a lot from that promotion. Uh, Ed, Ed Atlas was, he was a really crazy promoter. And I learned, let's just say I learned how to deal with every bad situation you could possibly be in in a wrestling show. He threw everything at me, but you know what? That helped me become better in, you know, in OTW, that helped me become better in DCW and other places I wrestled. And I also got to met a couple guys that wrestled in DCW in the past. Uh, you know, my good friend Bray Wolf and Andy Bivens. And another guy, I, you know, I got to mention that, you know, I, you know, I haven't actually not seen him since 2010. Let's see, I got this right, guys. Bazooka Joe. <laughs> um, he was another, Joe was another friend of mine that we trained and traveled on the road with. I actually wore his tights for way too long. Um, way too long. They were so faded out. Um, he came out to the school a lot to help me, you know, to get better in the ring. And you know, he was a great workout partner to have. Um, and now this next guy I'm going to mention uh, is kind of a sensitive su subject for the company, but feelings aside, I'm going to mention him anyway. Uh, a guy by the name of Katori. Um, I had a lot of great matches with this guy. He was another guy that we had great chemistry with. Um, he was the one I actually won a hardcore belt from and turned it into the technical title. And he's the only guy I can say in my lifetime that, that I've actually hit with a Christmas tree. Um, I'd like to mention uh, Blaine Hudson, AKA Scotty. Um, another guy that I train with at several uh, practices. I like to call him uh, my white luchador. And uh, I had, and I actually defended the heavyweight title against him, which I thought, you know, was an awesome match. It was a great title to defend against him. Um, a couple other, you know, people, you know, Trixie Lynn, who's not here anymore. I trained with her a lot, and I gotta say, Trixie, if you ever watch this, sorry for all the messed up swing and neck breakers I gave you. Sorry for uh, the tears and everything, yeah, and it was pretty bad. And Big Country also, I trained with him a lot. And then this next character I'm going to talk about is pretty bizarre. Goes by the name of Romeo Athens. Uh, we kind of had a love relationship, you know, thing going. He was uh, also another part of the American male regime. You know, he's the guy that you know. Knocked me out with a Cuervo bottle, dressed me up in a sun barrel, and, and sat in my lap. But also at the same time, if it wouldn't have been for him, I wouldn't have had the Jose Cuervo moment, you know, getting a little bit drunk to loosen me up in here. And next, I'd like to talk about my inductor, Zach Ripper Connor. And you had a, what can I say about Zach Connor? The first time I met this guy, I thought he was a dick. <laughs> and seven years later, he still is. <laughs> this kid is that. You know that's my love for you. Um, but one, one of the reasons I chose him to induct me, because yeah, like even with his busy schedule, he still took, you know, not that other guys had one looking for me too, Zach still took time out of his busy schedule with NXT to contact me and to bring me back home to DCW. And he was a big influence in you know, why I'm being inducted into the Hall of Fame tonight. Um, you know, getting to know you know Zach, you know, by talking to him on the phone, 
I've talked to this guy on the phone longer than I've talked to any female in my entire life. We just talked about the business for hours. You know, that was a time I think we really bonded and got to know each other. And I think we got really close, you know, you know, towards the, you know, last year, you know, before I left. Um, we're the same age, we got the same memories. You know, Zach's met, you know, made references in front of, you know, guys like the Gemini Trojans about the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And they're both looking at each other, not knowing what the hell he's talking about, but I knew what he was talking about. Um, and Zach, he has a passionate love for wrestling, which is another thing I love about him. And as he said, he's one of the major players in the company that I've never had a one-on-one -on -one match with. story I'd like to share with uh, Trotsky with him and Chris Wild one night stand when a story actually you were with us too Kale um, actually all four of us went up to Reading Pennsylvania for a show and you know I stopped to take a leak at, uh, at a Wawa and you know me and Kale was, you know we went in we came out and I'm looking for the car and I'm like where the hell's the car so you know and I look over by the gas pumps and I see Zach and Chris over there laughing so they wave me over there, like, get in the car, get in the car real quick, so. And then that cave of storm comes out, and then we're all at it. So yeah, I got to fall, you know, me and him got to be a victim of a one-night stand prank. And last, I'd like to talk about, you know, one of my closest friends, you know, in the business, KO Storm. Um, like he said, we've trained, we've traveled, we made you the same show. He is a naturally gifted athlete, um, but, and we've always had great chemistry. He's that guy that I could just read, read his thoughts in the ring. We could just read each other, you know, he knew what I was going to do, I knew what he was going to do. You know, we've never really been on the same side of the fence. We've kind of always been on the opposite sides. Um, you know, I've hit him with a quarterback bottle. Uh, you know, he stole my heavyweight title in what, two minutes, probably bigger than that. Uh, he's beat me and my dad up. He cut my hair off. <laughs> but you know what? Two of my best matches were my last show and my final matches, which I think were, you know, incredible matches. Um, and if there were any guy I could choose to retire me, it would be him. And like I say, Kale, I got a lot of love for him, a lot of respect for him. And I got one quick story to share about Kale, which, you know, another thing that you were riding with us too, Zach, back in my OTW show. It was me, uh, Kale, Zach, and RGP. And K.O. Storm goes flying through a toll booth. And then, what do we know? The cops come up, pull us right over. You know, the cops coming up looking at us all funny because a bunch of big wrestlers all packed into the small vehicle. And, uh, you know, RGP and Zach Connor are having a bet. Zach said, if you want to get a ticket, RGP's like, yes, he will. And what happened? He got a ticket. So, you know, anyway, I, I want to make a reference to, as you, if you can't tell by my music, uh, you know, I'm a huge, you know, fan of the 80s hair bands. And that reference is, you don't know what you got until it's gone. Um, I have a lot of great respect and admiration for pro wrestling. I think it's the coolest gig in the world, which could lead to a great career. And since I've been gone, there's nothing like walking through that curtain with a screaming crowd and wrestling in front of a screaming crowd. That's just an indescribable feeling that, you know, nothing, there's just nothing in my life that you know, can touch that. And, you know, I've always been a big fan of, you know, of WWE and wrestling since I was a child. You know, one of my favorites, you know, The Undertaker. Um, I think he's got the coolest gimmick ever in wrestling. Still pissed about the streak. Um, and, you know, 
And anyway, you know, I see a lot of new faces, you know, a lot of familiar faces, a lot of guys that I wish were still here. Um, that, you know, I got to meet a few months ago. Um, and I had one guy ask me, uh, he said, you know, what's your advice, you know, for all the, you know, for the new students and stuff? And it's three things. All I'm going to say is work hard, be respectful in the locker rooms, and don't walk around with an ego. Because there's always somebody out there that's bigger and better. I said, um, you know, one of the most talented you know, kids I got to watch was J.J. Cruz. Um, I, I actually watched uh, your video against uh, Corey Castaway. You did some incredible stuff. And J.J. showed me a great deal of respect, uh, respect so I want to thank him for that. Um, you know, I was worried about, you know, coming back. Would anybody remember me? You know, he knew who I was. Um, but now I'm going to get to the closing of this. Um, you know, i got to say, I'm, I'm honored as hell to be here tonight. Um, I would like to thank, you know, David Klein and DCW for choosing me to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. Uh, DCW will always be my home. Um, and I want to thank also everybody who puts the, you know, sets up the ring, who puts, you know, the music, the lights, everything together. And I'd also like to have my family right here stand up. And I just want to say thank you guys for your support. I want to thank my beautiful wife for her support. Um, and uh, you now, like I said, I, uh, I thank the good Lord. Sorry guys. <laughs> Thank you, brother.
the tag team championships from me and Mambo. We never got a rematch. <laughs> so, um, when I when I came into the wrestling business, I, I didn't really know how what kind of wrestler I wanted to be. I I knew I I had I had like kind of stars who inspired me, but no one on my level who inspired me. And you know. When I was nine months old, my father left, so I didn't really have a male role model. But uh, once I met Bon Boy, I kind of felt like, I, I want to be like this guy. I want more people to know who this guy is. Uh, it was just the way I felt all the time. And then when we, the first day we met, actually, uh, we, had, we had to team up. And they teamed us up. We never met before. And uh, I just know that he did some, some move where his like butt came really high up in my face when I was in the corner tag down. I was like, well, this guy's got a big butt. Why is this guy's butt so big and red? He had like, he had, like red tights on. And we always make that joke every time we talk about it. Um, but in that company, we kind of by accident started the idea of TNE. We kind of just were friends. And that was what was the coolest part of it because no one gave us that idea. No one said, hey, you guys are going to be team now, and you're going to be team to wear up. That was something we thought of. That's something they couldn't take away. That's not something, it was like once we started doing it, everybody wanted to be involved. And I want, for one second, you guys, check this guy, hold the camera right here. He was there with us. TNE was Rick and me and Bob Boyd and Cryptic Keegan, Roxy Cotton, Missy Sanchez. We started that. Dinlock was there. And it was all about, it was like, everybody had their clips, and we really didn't fit into those clips. So uh, we started our own one. Like, uh, what the, the funny thing was when we met, by the way, you, when you hang out with somebody a lot, you wind up hearing the same stories a lot. So Bob was an athlete in school, and he would tell us these stories. And uh, he told us this one story where he was telling, like, he was in varsity wrestling, and some guy had another guy in a headlock and his eyeball popped out. That's the story he told us. And, <laughs> and the second he told it, everybody seemed to want to believe it, and I just, just to be a jerk, was like, that didn't happen, you're making it up. You're making it up. And he's like, I swear to God, it's that guy! And he's like, he's like trying to call people, and like, I'm like, what's the guy's name? He's like, his name is like Jonathan Matthews or something. I'm like, that sounds made up. You're making it up. And like, that was like an example of some intensity that you would get off the guy. <laughs> and I got Wayne comes out here and tell me the guy's name and that it was real. Did you believe it, Rick? I didn't believe it. <laughs> no, you didn't believe it. But the guy's, the guy's eye fell out. Um, just, there's, there's so many funny stories, but I'm not going to go into too many of them because we don't really have the time for it. Uh, and uh, just the kind of wrestler that I am was based off of the intensity that he kind of fed me by accident. So uh, it means so much to me now that that baby sitting right there, right there, see that baby? That is the new era right now. That is my Bomboy. He's the reason for all of this for him, okay? And what I want to do, before, before, I guys have, before I have you guys uh, watch the video, I want to let you know that this title is Bon Boy's title now. I'm giving it to Bon Boy. Everybody check out this video for the new era of Matt Bon Boy.
theme song that I still use, you hear the phrase, Welcome to the New Era. And that's said by Bomboy himself. So let's welcome, let's welcome now, Matt Bomboy. Everybody, T.A.E. The New Era, Matt Bomboy! Thank you. 